Hi everyone, welcome back to this series about iPi widgets. Today I'm going to show you how you can make a super quick animation, just like this one, using iPi widgets. So let's dive right into the basics using Python code. By the way, all of the code I'm about to show you is available on my GitHub page. So to get started, I'll go ahead and import iPi widgets as widgets. And I'm also importing NumPy as well as matplotlib for some styling as well as data creation purposes. And specifically here, I'm going to create some X data that just spans the range of 0 to 2 pi. So now we're going to create our basic animation, and this is going to turn out to be a sine wave. So the first thing we want to do is, because we're going to be using the interact function, we're going to go ahead and define a function that represents our sine wave. So I'll say sine wave, and I'm going to then create a y variable that is just going to be NumPy's sine calculated on our x data. Then we're going to plot that out using matplotlib. We'll just plot x and y. So go ahead and take a look at what this basic function does. If I just take sine wave and I go ahead and execute that, we'll just see a nice sine wave. And so this is a static image. We'd like to go ahead and turn this plot into an animation. So to do that, I'm going to add another variable to my function. Let's shift our x variable by some other variable amount, let's say t. It's actually going to represent our time in our animation. So we're going to be shifting our sine wave a certain amount, and then we're going to have a basic default argument here of t equals 0 to start. So I can run this again, I'll see the same thing, but if I put in a new value for t, say t equals 1, I'm going to have that sine wave shifted, and I could continue increasing this however I'd like, the sine wave continues to shift down my x-axis. So that's going to be the basis of our animation, is that we have this sine wave and we'll vary t to shift that wave along the x-axis. Okay, so let's go ahead and build a widget. To do that, we'll reference the IPy widgets library, and then we're going to use this function called interact. By the way, if you're not familiar with the interact function, go ahead and check out my last video all about this interact function. So with this function, what we need to do now is pass in our sine wave function, and we're just going to then need to tell interact which variable should interact be changing. So let's say we want to change our t variable, and we set this up as maybe ranging from 0 to 20 of increments of 1. Let's check out what this does before we build our animation. Basically, if I've now passed in a tuple for my t value, I'll get a slider. And I can update this slider, slide this along, and you'll see that that sine wave is now changing. What's happening here is I'm just getting new values for t, here t is equal to 7, I'm passing that back into my function, and then I'm plotting x and y based on this new value for t. And I'm able to do that throughout this entire range from 0 to 20. So this is really cool, we can interact with this figure, but what we really want to do is build an animation that will range these values of t for us. There are definitely a few different ways that you can make animations with iPy widgets, but I want to show you a really simple way here today. So instead of having this tuple represent our t value, we're actually going to exchange this for a new type of widget. So as we saw in the past interact video, we can put in whatever widget we'd like here for each of these variables. So we'll reference the widgets library, and there's this other widget called play. This is actually going to give us an animation that we can play. So this play function takes in a couple of different arguments. For us, the main ones that we're going to use are called min, we'll set that equal to zero, and max, we'll set that equal to 20. The way that play works is it's now going to range in integers from 0 to 20, and it'll be passing those values to t, which goes back into our sine wave function. Okay, let's see what this does. Now you'll see that instead of having a slider, I have a play button, which is exactly what we want to have. I can now press this play button, and the sine wave will be updated from 0 to 20 all by itself. One more thing to note here, the very first value for t that we pass into this function is actually 0. That's coming from this default value of t that we passed in to our sine wave function. And there's even more that you can do with your animation, like putting it on a loop, 
and adding other widgets. Let's take a look in the code. One thing that you may have noticed about our animation is that we can press play, but eventually this animation will stop because we run through the values from t equals zero all the way up to t equals 20. If you would like your animation to continue on a loop, you can just select this last button here that looks like a loop. We'll turn that on, and basically now, once we press play, this will continue to loop throughout 0 to 20 and then all over again for however long we would like to go until we stop this animation. So definitely take advantage of this button if you would like your animation to be on a loop. The other thing you may have noticed here is that we're ranging from integer values from 0 to 20. So from what I can tell about this play widget, that is going to be your option to just have integer values for whatever argument you'd like. But if you'd like something other than integer values, what you can do is actually go back up to your function and we can just multiply this value t by a smaller or larger number to change from integers to whatever scale we'd like. So in this case, if I multiply this by 0.1 and rerun everything, now you're actually going to see this sine wave move at a much slower rate because we're taking all of the integer values from 0 to 20 and then multiplying them by 0.1. The other thing that can happen when you're making plot animations like this, um, it's not actually happening here, but sometimes your bounds for your figure can change quite a bit depending on if you're, let's say, increasing amplitude or uh, changing the range. So if you'd like to have a really clean animation, one recommendation I have for you is to go ahead and put in bounds for this plot. For example, plt.xlim, I'll set that to be 0 and 2 pi. And for my y limits, I'm going to set this to negative 1.5 and all the way up to positive 1.5. So this just makes sure that whatever plot I'm creating here will be the same bounds throughout the entire animation. It's not actually a huge deal in this problem, but sometimes you are going to see bounds that kind of go all over the place. So you may want to fix the bounds of your plot to make sure that you're not having that sort of problem. The final thing I wanted to show you about this animation is that we can actually include multiple different widgets within the same animation. So let's say we go back up to our function that's called sine wave, and let's rename this to be sine wave with frequency, because we're going to add frequency to our sine wave. So let's put a new variable in our arguments here. Let's call this one frequency, and we'll set the default to be one. We're going to then go down to our sine wave and include this uh, factor of frequency that will be multiplied by our x and t variables. So now we have frequency multiplied in and we have a default frequency of one. So let's run this. And now in our interact function, we're going to be interacting with this new function, sine wave with frequency. So we need to add one more variable here. T is going to be controlled by the play widget but let's also have frequency, which we'll control with a slider. We'll just range that from one to five, and our interval here will be 0.5. Now, once we execute that, we'll see not only our play button widget, but also our slider for the frequency. And we can go ahead and adjust this to adjust the frequency of our sine wave. And notice that even if I am currently playing this widget, I can still adjust the frequency to be whatever I'd like, even while the widget is playing. So that's pretty cool that you can have this play button as well as whatever other widgets you want within your animation. As a final note, you would then want to share this animation with someone else. You can either send them the entire Jupyter Notebook that you've been working on, or maybe you can take a screen recording of just this section of the notebook using a product like QuickTime. That's exactly what I do on my channel. You can also do things like export the HTML and JavaScript that's powering this widget, but we'll talk more about that in videos coming up. So I hope you enjoyed learning that quick way that you can build an animation using iPy widgets. If you have other things that you want to see about iPy widgets, let me know about them in the comments section below. I've gotten some great suggestions so far, so keep those coming. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time. Using the iPy widgets. Using the, using the widgets. Huh? And adding other widgets to adding a slider to